The victim in question, whose identity we will not reveal, is a 16-year-old S4 candidate who claims that at the beginning of last month, she and three other blind students traveled to Kenya for a conference on the use of IT to address the needs of the unsighted. At this four-day conference, Dr. Lawrence Aaron, who was the former dean of the School of Special Needs but currently serving as the vice chancellor in charge of finances at Chambogo University, was elected as their chaperone, owing to his stature in dealing with learners with special needs. We arrived on Monday and we stayed there until Thursday. We had to miss the closing ceremony in order to catch a flight back home. But trouble arose when they returned home and he offered to take the victim to her parents' home in Chida Division. We remained the only two people in that car and I was sitting in the co-driver's seat. I got thirsty and I asked for water. He gave me a bottle and once I drank, I blacked out. After some time, when I gained the consciousness, I was in the back seat. He immediately gave me a pill, and when I asked what was it for, he said it would be effective before 72 hours. According to the victim, Dr. Aaron allegedly made some threats after committing the act. My life in the he said that if I disclose it to anyone, I would put my life and that of my parents in danger. But four days later, when she returned to school for her UNEP examinations, she mustered the courage to report the matter to one of her teachers. I was not at peace from time to time. I would experience the trauma again of being in shock again after realizing that I had been defiled. Time was uh, forwarded to the office of uh, the DPP who advised that uh, we should make further investigation, further inquiries, uh, looking into the aspect of uh, recording statements from uh, the last child who was dropped off and also the person who opened up the gate for, the, for Aaron and uh, the girl to enter the gate. The victim now wants Dr. Aaron to face justice. At least have him behind bars. Her father, whose identity we are also withholding from now, says he has been following this case ever since it was filed. They received me at the gender department. They explained to me everything and told me the file has been called. It is in the KMP East region. But he is concerned about the police decision to release the suspect on police bond for what he considers to be a capital offence. Primary evidence. That is the medical exam police medical examination report. It clearly shows that there was a forceful penetration. There was injury. I think this one could have been enough to take this man before magistrate. We will of course be instructed to look into how this suspect was given bond. Uh, but in most cases, if the file is uh, forwarded to the RSA before the suspect is released, Attempts to reach Dr. Aaron on this matter have failed as his known phone number is switched off. Professor Eli Katunguka, the vice chancellor of Chambogo University, says they have been made aware of these grave allegations and have instituted their own probe into the matter by establishing a special investigations committee. Which will include listening to the people who complain and even listening to the person whose allegation, who, who has received the allegation. As such, Professor Katunguka has encouraged the family to present its case to this committee. If we don't get that information, it remains an allegation and we cannot punish somebody on an allegation. The Uganda National Association for the Blind, which has also joined this case, has expressed dismay at the allegations and wants full and complete investigations into the matter. We are not going to leave uh, any stone unturned until this girl very innocent girl of 16 years gets justice. According to the 2022 police report, 12,580 cases of defilement were reported nationwide. Joyce Nakato, NTV Tonight.